Welcome to Conversations with the Authors. Hello, dear listeners and readers, and welcome back to Conversations with the Authors. I'm your host, Daniel Troop. I'm Daryl. I'm Sandra. And thank you so much for pressing the play button. For those of you who celebrated and will celebrate a happy belated Mother's Day, if you are like me, then you gave your mother a card, greeting card, along with a gift and some food, I hope. You know, it's funny because humans have been writing for a very long time. Sandra and Daryl, you wrote How Nicholas Became Santa Claus. True. Yeah. Highly rated fantasy novel. Uh, I wrote on a greeting card that was written uh, for you. Yes, you uh, did. Centuries ago, humans used to write on walls and on uh, carvings and uh, hieroglyphs and such. And in China, arguably around 2,000 years ago, a royal member of the court named Kai Lun, pardon my pronunciation, I got that wrong, uh, created paper, uh, which, uh, interestingly enough, the rest of the world also created paper in a similar manner. Uh, you know, and it started off with, you know, crushed reeds and uh, you know, from mulberry plant and Egyptians used... Uh, they used to press things into clay. Yes, yes. As well, you mm -hmm. know, whether it be writing text or music. Right, yes. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, rice and straw in Japan or, you know... Flowers. Mm, yes, you know, so there's all these different materials. And with all these things we write on, uh, you've got to wonder, uh, what's the best you know, why Why write on paper versus digital? And in this age, if you listen to our last podcast, we talked about AI. And so technology is a big part of our society now, including audiobooks mm -hmm. and e-readers. You, um, you think it'll ever overtake stone? Will it be yeah. written, hoping, written in stone? I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> I hear there's some progress on that. Uh, you know. uh, so the question is what, and, and this is not an argument as to why you should use paper versus digital versus uh, you know audiobooks. This is simply a conversation about the subject. Um, so why would paper arguably be better, in your opinion? Or what, in your opinion, is the better medium for what, you? You know, I... I I think right now that's uh, probably the technology where, where we've been for you know several hundred years now. We write things on on paper. It, before that, it was parchment. Before that, it was bark or something else. But uh, it's it's enduring, and that's the thing about it. Uh, we can read the thoughts of authors long dead. You know, we we still uh, uh, can get information from them and pass knowledge along, and it's been passed on paper. It's like the Vatican has libraries you yes. know, full of books from thousands of years ago. And uh, Library of, of Congress, you know, has things that go back to the beginning of our country and it's all written on paper. And you might say, well, that's the only technology we have we had then. But it is tried and true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and there, there's something to be said about paper and certainly uh, for someone with disabilities, uh, audio or physical or what have you, um, digital and audio books are great. For instance, Sandy, you have uh, dyslexia, severe dyslexia. Yep. Um, so like backwards, upside down, memory affected because it's not just it's not just about the words, Daryl. Mm -hmm. Correct. And it's not just about the words. So dyslexia it could be more than. Well, that. dyslexia is a, is a, is a, 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 a thing that affects not just one's reading and one's writing, but one's memory of things and the way they hear things. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a whole complex of things that happens in, in dyslexia. Uh, dys means bad. Lexia refers to writing, but there's dyscalculia. There's uh, 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 alexithymia, you know, uh, you know, inability to tell how you feel about things. So it's a, it's a whole gamut of things. Right. And, and so, so, Sandra, so digital... Is better for you, or is it not is audio better for you? Or I remember things better when I use the paper book, mm -hmm. but I have to work super hard at it because a lot of times I'll look at the paper book and numbers look like they're totally alien, and words are backwards, upside down, scrambled, and they keep on moving as I'm trying mm -hmm. to read them. So. A paper book is great for when I want to put something in the margin and write a, a note to myself, but 
a digital book mm -hmm. is better for being able to weight the font mm -hmm. and change the lighting or individualize a font color on every line. So I can have a yellow line, a red line, a blue line, a green line. Yeah, so there's this, there's a large um, uh, capability for customization with digital books than with uh, physical books. So physical books, you can, you know, write in the margins. You can, you know, you can uh, change your bookmark. Um, well, there's a lot to be said for that, to be right. able to write the margins. That they've done research to show that uh, at people who do reading in physical books mm -hmm. actually score better on tests than those who read uh, textbooks that are electronic. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. And if you're, if, you're, if you're listening to the show, you're familiar with the fact that uh, I pull my family into a lot of things. Uh, and so this is uh, no exception. Uh, with me, I have my little baby sister, uh, professor of psychology, Marina Troop. Uh, and we're talking about uh, how sort of physical books and audio books and digital books sort of how they compare. Not necessarily what's better or what's best, but just sort of what works for you. And what do you find works for you? Do physical books? Do you like digital books? Do you like audio books? Uh, Braille? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hi. Uh, I, I don't know. I think I would be telling my age, I suppose, uh, by saying that I'm kind of like in the median between where did where you know starting to come into the more of the digital age with digital media mm -hmm. um and it was never really my preference i never liked um having to read off of a screen or uh having to um uh use a, kind of like a book on tape i right, suppose right, where right. all the, those things do have their place but i think there's something to be said about uh reading a text over digital media uh, because of, there's a whole experience that encompasses uh, reading a text, you know, right. uh, feeling the pages and turning the pages. Yes, yes, and, there's a, uh, a connection It's an experience. There. Right. Actually, you can actually smell the page, especially if you've got a really, really old book. Yep, you yeah. Know? That does and I think it, and it, it, helps, it helps with remembering because... Yes, I was going to say. Can, oh, wow. I, yeah. I, can, I can go, I can be reading a passage and... If that page has a specific smell, it says, oh, I know where that answer is. It's on spaghetti and War of the World. You know I mean, I think <laughs> that um, as, as an instructor, um, you know, when I walk down my classroom, it's, it's, there's a lot of distraction in digital media. So yeah. my students, um, you know, instead of focusing on their book and looking at their pages, you walk around and... You know, they have notifications going off and they've got, you know, other things happening it's on their computers. It's interesting you say that because I was speaking with our, um, our niece and nephew about uh, their books because I'm going to ask everybody. Um, and they were saying that, you know, uh, digital is great, but, uh, you know, it leads itself to distraction because the yes. Internet's right there. Yes. So yes. you could really just sort of it's lose like your built-in distraction. Yes. Um, uh, okay. But also, yes. too, I think it's limited right. in terms of, like, sharing. I can't really lend you a digital book. No. You, no, you can't. But you know what? It's it, When you say that, it kind of makes you think of, like, um, the experience of actually going to a library. <laughs> you yes. know, you can't, you know, there's something to be said about going into a library and looking for a specific book which takes your eye to maybe another book or... You know, just what? the coincidental discovery, right? Right, right. exactly. Right. And then sitting there trying to, you know, uh, pick through digital media right. in a library. It's not the same. It's a completely different experience, and it opens avenues that maybe you, you know, never thought that oh, you would yeah. be interested in. Oh, yeah. I mean, I spent in. lots of time mm -hmm. uh, when I was in college just sort of hanging out at the Harold Washington Library because I was, you know, at Columbia at the time and I was between classes and I wanted something to do and I would hang out at the library because it was there, it was close, uh, I couldn't be late for class because it was down the street. But also, uh, you know, you get to meet some interesting people when browsing the aisles, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, getting a recommendation from someone in person about a physical book, to me, is I think there's, there's more 
credit to it sometimes. Uh, right. I, I, we're not we're not downing well, electronic that's, that's, because right. our, our book does come right. out. That's not on, on electronic, no. but there is there's a something place. for everybody, there right? There is a place right. for there electronic. Media. But here's the great thing about having how Nichols became Santa Claus on digital medium: you can take it wherever you want to yes, take it. And for those who are, you know, you know, um, impaired in those areas, where, absolutely. Um, a physical book is just not something that they can use or, you know, for the blind or right. things like that. So it has its place, you know, but everybody has their preference. And my preference happens to be text or right. there, There's that search feature, though, in right. electronic books, that some, especially in, 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 in didactic books, things where you're yes. trying to learn yes. something, where you can search really quickly. It's all, yeah. So, like, if you run into something in a book and you want to quickly uh, enhance your understanding, you just, you know... Click on the link, Click right? on the link <laughs> right. or, you know, minimize your screen and do a quick little Google search. and. But you know what? That there too, you go. Um, I, I, I can do kind of enjoy being able to go into a book, you know, and, and look up something, you know, from, you know, in another book, obviously. Mm-hmm. But in digital, um, it's great because you can, and you might do this with Nicholas. Say you find a word in, in, in novel that you might not understand you can maybe highlight it or click it well, and maybe if, if you find a character right, that or you a want character to re- review his background again oh yeah i remember this guy right and you can go back to it again right and you can sort of search right. that up or let's say you want to find out about a location that might be based off of something real you can click on that History and maybe of hyperlink it and go yeah, to absolutely. another absolutely. thing um, so, or if I mean, you have a disability like mine where right? i read all three forms of right. the book in 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 at one time i read I have the paperback, mm-hmm. the paper in my hand, yeah. and I have the computer uh-huh. one on the computer, uh-huh. and then I have the ability for the computer to read it to me in case right. I can't. Yeah, I do a lot of I do a lot of dual I do a lot of dual reading with yeah. audio books. <laughs> right. So I'll do an audio book and I'll do the manual book at the same time, and it'll, it'll sort of help me keep track. Um, uh, and, you know, do my visuals that way. And ladies and gentlemen, you know this is unscripted, so if you hear babies in the background, it's because Marina's babies need her. <laughs> so, Marina, thank you so much for your uh, input yes, on the absolutely conversation. absolutely, no problem. And, uh, uh, I'll let you get back to them baby birds. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Absolutely. <laughs> and, of course, if you're still listening, uh, Jay, if you've heard the jingles, you know that Jay was probably in the room, who is our giant American King Shepherd, and he decided he's also going to leave and check on his puppy on Farrah downstairs. I'm sure she's sleeping or waiting to chew on him or something. Uh, so you wanted to say something else about uh, multiple mediums at the same time. When you're using multiple mediums at the same time, I have the option of immediately having research at my hand. So if I don't recognize a word, I can have the computer say the word, and then it'll tell me what the origin of that word is. And then... I can say, what's the country that it belonged to? And it will tell me that. And then I can go back to my book and look at it and say, oh, now that makes sense. Because the country and the word pertain to the correct time period and the correct point of the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because... Um, like I said, I'm not knocking any sort of medium because I think they're all great. Physical books are great. I think burning a book is the most one of the most horrible things you can do. It uh, is. Digital books uh, are also great. They're so prevalent, and we can get them in the hands of people who can't necessarily get books themselves. Uh, and, and of course, audio books are great. You know, and audio books came in about you know the 1980s. They started getting real popular. So if you're like me, you you were hooked. You were hooked on phonics, which came, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they came uh, in the style of uh, book and audio. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. And, 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 and Daryl, I got to, what's currently coursing through your cerebral brain? <laughs> no, I, I, was, I was just thinking about uh, uh, dyslexia, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot of see, people see that as, as uh, some kind of reading disability. It's mm-hmm. an alternate way of thinking, uh, more so. And you've got a lot of famous people, for instance, who mm-hmm. have dyslexia. And there's Whoopi Goldberg, Henry Winkler, Richard Branson, mm-hmm. and you've got Cher and uh, Kiera Knightley, Anderson Cooper, who is oh, a journalist. Yes, 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 yes. And you've got Tom Cruise and Steven Spielberg, Octavia 
Spencer, you know, the, the Academy right. Award winner. So, yeah, a lot so of... So, some, some people with it are extremely creative. Right. So, you can still be successful and, you know, attain right. your dreams and be actors and writers and creators uh, uh, and readers, uh, even if you have uh, uh, disabilities. And, I, and, and, again, the great thing about d digital, which you can't necessarily do... Unless you have some, you know, physical means of doing it, is you can change the text and the background, or you can change the text color or font have, even, or the, or the weight font, of the font, the mm -hmm. weight of the font. You know, the, you know, if you have, say, uh, some color blindness or or some sort of other visual impairment, uh, it allows us to, you know, better accommodate our readers uh, who are having those sorts of issues. But I find one big fault. Mm with the e-medias and, and the digital media, and that is when the OS systems upgrade, many of my books and references are lost, and I have to go back to all my paper files in order to find what I needed. Right. And, and, and that's not, of course, blaming iOS being Apple. That's Sometimes it could just be my mom is not the most technical savvy computer. person in the world. So, uh, you know, <laughs> take her complaint with a grain of salt uh, because sometimes it's just... Uh, Anything you know, computer is iOS to me. Uh, but again, you know, sometimes I think the problem with uh, digital is that, uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not always available for certain books. There well, are, and, know, and then, too, in some circumstances... People have to be connected to the internet. Yes. And at the mm -hmm. moment, they might not have that capability. Right. And yes, there are thumb drives that have the, the books on them, yes. but there are other things that are internet dependent. Right. But the great thing about having How Nicholas Became Santa Claus, for instance, uh, on digital or, or, or physical medium uh, that you can pick up through our website, of course, at trippbooks.com, mm -hmm. is that uh, <laughs> it doesn't, you don't have to plug it in. Uh, you know, there's no there's no charge. And it's economical. Yeah. The electronic yeah, book is right. economical. And you know, we don't, you know, they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, some people say save the trees, and yes, you should save the trees, and that's why our books are generally printed on demand. It's not something we don't print them in high mass and have them in waiting in a warehouse waiting for someone to pick them up. Uh, so, uh, so, well, so we're eager, really, right. to have people get it whichever way Absolutely. is comfortable for them. We want you and, to enjoy uh, it. And enjoy the electronic it. books are are a fraction. Absolutely. You know, and, and cost. So absolutely. You know, and that, the fun part about a, an, an electronic book is, if my hands are busy I, and I and I have other people in the room that I want to hear this, I can say, put this on audio, and I can play my book out loud, right. and then a whole bunch of people. My, my, my secret is that I really do like electronic. I do. So. You have to ask this though, because I like electronic too, and I like physical books, and I like. Um, you know, reading books and character mm -hmm. in my hand. I have always done that sort of in video games and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, they're text based sometimes and you have to read for these characters and right. I'll make up a voice or make up a style and I'll enjoy it. That's how I did with my brothers. Mm -hmm. And if you read some of the if you've heard some of the earliest podcasts, which I hope that you did, um, I also read some of the book and I've done characters. Yes. And therein lies perhaps another issue. Do you think that that perhaps limits our readers in terms of, or not? No, I, readers, I think no, I don't think it limits. I, I think it's a different experience. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like watching a, a play or or listening to a radio play. Right. They're different experiences. Yeah. And if you, for instance, listen to an audio book, uh, you may hear the narrator with use different voices and cadences uh, while he's delivering the story. And it's almost like you're you're watching, you're watching the, the, the movie. Yeah. It's very good. And the the only uh, uh, caveat is that you want to make sure that your narrator fits the story. Right. That is, you know, it would be I know, I know very strange if you if you heard uh, somebody who sounded like Darth Vader reading a story about three blind mice right. or something. Yeah. So or or, mice, or, yeah. or or a woman's story. So it, but so make sure your narrator is fitting the story. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think you know having having a match is definitely important. I think it's just like watching a movie. I said you want continuity, you don't want to take out of the story. So I think that a poor you know narration or a poor character can definitely do that. I saw a video of, for instance, um, 
the actor who played Schmeagel in the mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings series, our movie series, right. doing the audio book in character. Right. So, uh, again, I guess it really just depends on, you know, your preference. I, I want characters, to, you know, our readers to be able to create their own ideas of what these characters look and sound like. Yeah, and same, some prefer it that way to others. Some like people it, may yeah, not be so great at that, you know. Uh, so I, I I think it's got a pros and cons as everything else does. You know who is a pro? Our composer Alexander Nakarada. He does our intro, and and uh, like I said, it's always a joy to hear it. Uh, and if you're looking for another pro, you can check out the book at troopbooks.com, uh, where you can visit our author page at Ewing's Publishing, where you can pick up a hardcover or a soft cover. And please visit our social media at Facebook. Troop Books, Instagram, Troop Books, TikTok, Troop Books, and even TikTok, Troop Books, T-R-O-U-P-E. I encourage you to please pick up the book, buy the book, read the book, but you'll love the book. And uh, we'll talk to you next time on Conversations with the Authors. Mm-hmm.